Hello friends and welcome to Smart Coach. Today we are talking about the Anglo Maratha Wars. Okay, Anglo Maratha Wars, and uh, we have decided to make this video in three parts because it is a quite a lengthy chapter of Indian history. Okay, the conflicts between the Marathas and the uh, Britishers. All right, in this part, that is the first part, part one. I'll be dealing with the first Anglo-Maratha Wars and the treaties that were uh, conducted during the first Anglo-Maratha Wars. We will be looking into the causes also of the first Anglo-Maratha Wars. So, without further ado, let us proceed into the uh, you see main thing in cont contention that is the conflict between the British and the Marathas. All right. So, the first Anglo-Maratha Wars come about because of the succession dispute following the death of. Madhav Rao, all right, Peshwa Madhav Rao, all right. So Peshwa Madhav Rao dies and therefore a dispute begins, all right, between his brother that is or and who ultimately becomes the Peshwa, all right, Peshwa Narayan Rao and Peshwa Raghunath Rao, all right. Okay, so this is the very, uh, you say, formative stage of uh, the Anglo-Maratha Wars, okay, but in order to understand how the Britishers came into conflict because of this, uh, you say, uh, dispute in succession, we'll also have to uh, learn about the British agenda. The British agenda at this time, all right, is that of expansion and they are conducting expansion as I talk about in different videos, uh, which I have taken on modern Indian history and British expansionist policies. The British expansion at this point of time was fueled by their intrigues in the courts of the native rulers. So they would uh, find themselves aligning, uh, they would align themselves with uh, uh, factions within courts of native rulers and in that way they would enter the politics of a native state and by doing so they would start militarily or aggressively mobilizing also all right against that state and the main intention behind doing all of this is to acquire territories and this is nothing different all right this succession dispute that came about after the death of Madhav Rao this is taken advantage of by the Britishers okay and this is what develops into the series of battles and series of uh, you see uh, conflicts between the Marathas and the Britishers which is defined as the first Anglo-Maratha Wars all right so in this succession dispute between the brother of Madhav Rao and the uncle of Madhav Rao, that is Raghunath Rao, the British support Raghunath Rao, all right? Or the British East India Company, it supports Raghunath Rao, all right? And they conclude a treaty. The treaty that is concluded is the Treaty of Surat. Surat, which is concluded in the year 1774. Five, okay, the Treaty of Surat that is concluded in the year 1775 between Raghunath Rao and the British East India Company, at least the Bombay Presidency of the British East India Company, it states that Raghunath Rao will be helped by the British with uh, the provision of 2500 soldiers, okay. 2500 soldiers, 2500 troops will be provided to Raghunath Rao and Raghunath Rao will, you see, in return, provide the British with Salset and Basin, all right, two territories, okay, this would be provided to the British by Raghunath Rao. Now, uh, this treaty is concluded and the forces of Raghunath Rao and the British forces, that is the 2500 soldiers or 2500 troops that were promised to Raghunath Rao, they mobilize, mobilize against Narayan Rao and Narayan Rao is defeated, all right, so Narayan Rao is defeated, all right. However, we have to remember that, you see, the Bombay, Presi uh, Bombay Presidency's de uh, decision to conclude this treaty is not agreed upon by the, uh, you see, uh, company at Calcutta, all right, or the authorities of the company at Calcutta. And because of this, there is another treaty that is signed, all right, after the defeat of Narayan Rao. There is another treaty that is signed, all right, and that treaty is called the Treaty of Purandar. 
Now, this Treaty of Purandar is different from the one which was signed by Sivaji with the Mughals. Of course, you will have to remember there are two treaties of Purandar, one signed between the Britishers and the uh, Marathas, all right, under Raghunath Rao, okay, and the other one was signed by Sivaji, okay, we, uh, uh, with the Mughals, okay. So, this Treaty of Purandar is completely different treaty and this Treaty of Purandar was done or concluded in order to negate the Treaty of Surat, okay, it was not accepted by the uh, Calcutta establishment of the British East India Company, okay, therefore the Treaty of Purandar was signed in the year 1776, okay. So, this treaty, according to this treaty, Raghunath Rao's ascendancy as the new Peshwa is disputed and therefore Raghunath Rao is only allowed, Raghunath Rao is only allowed a pension, alright, and he is not allowed to become the Peshwa, all right. However, the British will retain their territories, okay. The British will retain their territories and Raghunath Rao is allowed only a pension, okay. So, proceeding forward, we see that this treaty which was concluded uh, with the Marathas, okay, and uh, in uh, uh, for Raghunath Rao, it was concluded by, uh, you see, Nana Padnavis, all right. Nana Padwavis who concluded the Treaty of Purandar with the Britishers or the British establishment in Calcutta, he went into contravention of this treaty because this treaty also stated that the Marathas cannot, uh, you see, actively support any other European group. However, Nana Padnavis went against it and, you see, granted a port in the west coast, okay, port in west coast to the French, all right. And it is because of this that the climactic, uh, you see, uh, engagements uh, or military engagements between the British and the Marathas began, okay. The British forces mobilized and they met the Maratha forces which was led by Mahaji Sindhya, alright. Mahaji Sindhya, alright. Uh, the British, uh, sorry, Maratha troops which were led by Mahaji Sindhya and the British troops, they met together at Wadgao, alright in 1779 and it is said that the British, okay, we can, we know that the British at Wadgao, they, uh, you see, received a crushing defeat, all right, Britishers are defeated by the Marathas. So, British East India Company defeated by Marathas, all right. And after this defeat with the British East India Company, all right, the uh, East India Company, it signs a treaty with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the Marathas, all right, known as the Treaty of Wadgao. Treaty of Wadgao. All right. So, this is also important. The Treaty of Wadgao, which was signed in 1779. The year is 1779 and it is a result of the defeat of the British at the hands of the Marathas, all right. And you see, one of the uh, important uh, reasons behind, you see, the Anglo-Maratha was dragging on up until the 1782s, all right. The Anglo-Maratha war, it just does not end with the defeat of the British in 1779. It actually goes on till 1782, okay. It goes on till 1782 and the reason behind the Anglo-Maratha war proceeding from 1775, let me write down the date from 1775 extending up till 1782. So one of the chief reasons because of which the Anglo-Maratha Wars is drags on from 1775 up until 1782 is because there is no coordination between the British establishment in Calcutta and the British establishment in Bombay. There is no clear chain of authority and it is because of this reason that through the acts that are passed subsequently, which we have studied in our videos on the various acts or legislations that were passed by the British government, we see that there is a clear chain of command established through these acts, okay, subsequent acts, all right, up uh, in the 19th century and in the 20th century also. Acts, they provide for, uh, you see, integration of the British Empire in India. Some acts, they provide for centralizations, others later on after 1858, they provide for, uh, you see, uh, the lack of, uh, sorry, not uh, just the lack of centralization, but a kind of a federal, you see, system, all right, or a little bit of a federalization, okay. And uh, it is uh, because of this reason that we also see that the uh, Anglo-Maratha Wars, they drag on from 1775 up until 1782, because, you see, just like the 
first treaty or treaty of surat was not agreed upon by the british establishment in calcutta the treaty of wadgaon was also not agreed upon by the establishment in calcutta okay and uh, you see uh, this this treaty it is said that they it lacked the authority okay it lacked uh, the uh, the people who were signing this treaty they lacked the authority to sign such a treaty all right and because of this reason all right uh, skirmishes continue up until 1782 when finally the treaty of salbai all right treaty of salbai is signed all right in 1782 which effectively it ends the british conflict with the marathas for the uh, you see up uh, for the few uh, you see uh, coming years okay uh, somewhere about uh, two decades all right so the treaty of salbai according to the treaty of salbai all right the marathas maratha territories are restituted Maratha territories are restituted, okay, to the Marathas. The British retain uh, Basen, all right. However, Salsette and uh, you see territories such as Broch and all, they are returned to the Marathas, all right. And apart from that, we also see that uh, the British conclude a very important pact with the Marathas, and that is the Marathas agree. the marathas agree to help the british against mysore all right help against mysore all right the mysore state uh, which had gained uh, territories from the british through warfare all right the marathas they agree that they would help the british to uh, gain back territories and they will also help the british to counter the marathas apart from that the treaty also states that ragunath rao all right ragunath rao will no longer be uh, supported all right ragunath now will no longer be supported by the british all right and apart from that there is also a provision within this treaty all right that the marathas will not conduct any kind of exchange all right territorial exchange or diplomatic exchange with foreign powers marathas will not conduct any kind of exchange with foreign powers that is such as french all right without british consent all right so marathas will not conduct any kind of uh, exchange with foreign powers without british con uh, consent so this is how the uh, you see uh, the first anglo maratha war it ends all right it ends uh, you see uh, with a treaty which is conducted a peace treaty uh, between the britishers and the marathas which you see really provide for peace for the upcoming years quite a long spell it seems okay and after that again uh, you see a new round of engagements it starts between the marathas and the britishers all right chief things that you have to remember are the important belligerents all right that is peshwa narayan rao raghunath rao and how the british took advantage of this situation you will also have to remember the treaties and the dates associated with the treaties okay because questions might come from these areas also all right so with that i hope that this video was helpful we will proceed with this uh, theme that is anglo maratha wars in our next video and in our next part to this video okay so with that i take your leave thank you